I might add a bit of Kapilabhati breath, which is the one where we use the tummy. I'll see how we go for time. If you're doing Kapilabhati, it's not great if you're pregnant. Don't do it if you're pregnant. Um, and it's not great if you've got an upset tummy or you, um, you're feeling particularly heightened levels of anxiety at the moment, then I would stay away from that. But otherwise, it's quite a good one for churning things up inside. Okay, so let's start by sitting comfortably. A little smile on your face this Monday morning. And we'll begin with the eyes down. You're either looking at the ground or your eyelids can be closed. We will be opening our eyes later. And your tongue pressing up into the roof of your mouth. Softening the corners of your lips, the corners of your eyes. Allowing yourself to arrive. Noticing how the in-breath feels through the nostrils how the out-breath feels. And we'll begin by just offering the fruits of our practice to all sentient beings. Acknowledging that as we practice on an individual level, we affect the collective affect and support the collective. And gently starting to take some circles with the head so that we get to feel how the neck's doing this morning, right ear to right shoulder. And very slowly dropping chin down to chest. And left ear to left shoulder. And coming up and over. Switching directions. Coming up to center and starting to slowly circle the shoulders. Circling the elbows. Going just a little bit slower than your first instinct wants you to go. And then if you have space, full arm extensions. And then giving yourself a hug, wrapping your arms around you. Just notice which arm is on the top. So we can make sure we do the other arm next time. Give yourself a little squeeze and then from here, take the hands up. Maybe you can get your palms together. And press the elbows forward and breathe into the back of the heart.
And unravel the arms, take your hands behind your back. Interlink your fingers, press the palms away, lift the gaze. And then releasing, wrapping your arms around you again, this time the other arm is on top. Nice little squeeze, it's quite nice, you can actually take hold of your shoulder blades. Often when I'm doing a massage, it will be those muscles that slide underneath the shoulder blades so that, that love to be massaged. So you can actually use your fingers to get in there and give yourself a little moment of massage. And then when you're ready, bringing your hands forwards, palms towards one another, elbows forwards. Breathing into the back of the heart. Unraveling the arms, bring your hands to your knees. Inhale, take the left arm up. As you exhale, take the arm across to the right knee, right hand behind, a little twist. Switching sides, maybe take the right arm up first, get that extra height, take it across to the left knee, left hand behind you. coming back to center and we're going to focus in for a moment on some audible the sense of hearing some audible sound so take a moment to expand your sense of hearing maybe you can hear what's going on outside Maybe you can hear the neighbours, the birds, people on the street. Let's take time to really expand our sense of hearing and notice how far we can stretch that. What's the furthest thing you can hear? And then bringing your sense of hearing back closer, hearing what's going on in your household, in your space, and then coming to listen to the sounds of your body. As you breathe in and out through the nose, a gentle ujjayi breath vibrating through the throat so it becomes audible in itself. And we're going to gently open the eyes. I'm going to take your hands up in front of you. Just look at your hands. And then start to take the hands apart. You're moving quite slowly. So you're still looking straight ahead, but you're just engaging the periphery vision. And pause for a little bit. Notice how you can hold both the 
central gaze and the periphery vision. And let's take the arms a little wider. And still seeing out of the corners of your eyes. Pause for a bit. So you're quite well expanded now. Even though you're still looking forward, you're able to see your hands. Maybe go a little bit further. How far can you go until the hands actually go out of your periphery vision? Hearing the sound of your ujjayi breath as you're here. Just keep your eyes in that periphery field. And start to bring the hands a little closer. And keep watching the hands. And bringing your hands together. And then closing your eyelids and dropping your forehead to your fingertips. And then bring your hands down into your lap. Looking straight ahead, and you're going to use your gaze. Imagine your gaze is taking your body by the hand and leading it. You're going to use your gaze, your eyes, to go to the side. We're going to do that quite slowly. This is much trickier than it sounds. So we're just going to use your gaze to draw your awareness over to the side. And your face will slowly start to follow. How far can you go? You even see all the way behind you. And then you're going to change direction. So your gaze is the thing that leads. Your face moves after the gaze has begun its journey in the opposite direction. You might find that your head just wants to take over, it keeps jumping ahead, or not. might start to get crazy things happening in your field of vision. How far can you go? And we're going to go again all the way around. We're taking our time. These practices, they're really supportive for the vagal nerve. So I'm not just doing random things. And then last time, heading back in the opposite direction. Coming back 
slowly to center. You're going to look down the length of your nose to the tip of your nose. You're going to slowly tilt your head back. And then when you're the whole way back and you're looking down the length of your nose, you're going to change direction. So you're going to take your gaze upwards and bring your chin down towards your chest. We're kind of doing eye yoga this morning. One more time, looking down the length of your nose towards the tip of your nose. And then looking upwards as you drop your chin towards your chest. coming to centre. You can let your eyelids drop or keep them open but looking down at the floor. We're going to take a B breath. So you're going to press your tongue up into the roof of your mouth and you're going to bring your um, index fingers and just close your ears. But don't do that just yet because you won't be able to hear me. When we begin you're going to do that. And we're going to, um, as you exhale, you're going to make the sound um, on and it's going to just re resonate around and around and around inside your skull. It sounds a lot like a bee buzzing. And we'll do that for maybe anywhere between six to 10 breaths. You can stop at any time. If it feels uncomfortable, by all means, stop completely. Um, it's just supposed to be quite, it's actually a really calming breath, usually. So everybody, to bring in your fingers to your ears, closing the little flaps of your ears, Taking a nice breath in through the nose. Pressing tongue up into roof of mouth as you exhale. Mm.
making your next one your final one. And then when you're finished, bringing your hands down into your lap. Taking a moment to notice how that feels. So we could add Kapalabhati breath here, but I don't think we should. I think that stirred things up enough for today. So return to your even breath. Nice long breath in, nice long breath out. Noticing the gaps in between. And start to draw your breath down into your heart space. Almost as if your heart were being breathed. And then building up the energy of the heart space with time to reflect on what we're grateful for. And then inviting our hearts to allow us to understand an intention for this week. And recognizing that that awareness, that understanding comes in many different forms. It's not always a cognitive, ah yes, this. Sometimes it's a sense, a feeling. And sometimes it just percolates in the background, quietly filtering through into your week without you really consciously being aware of it. Inviting the intention of your heart to guide the week ahead. so much for coming again this morning, offering up the fruits of our practice to all sentient beings. The love inside of me sees the love inside of you.